Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shellstool, and this is another tutorial for modding space engineers. In this episode, we'll be checking to see how well our gyroscope is working and if everything is falling in line as it should be. I'll try to highlight some of the places where a error could happen and where you could check to fix the error if that is the case. As a side note, I am actually in a different location, borrowing the Boyson Media computer to record this episode because my computer's video card is not able to keep up with recording in game for space engineers. I need to hopefully raise enough money to get a new one, which is about a hundred to three hundred dollars, depending on which one I'm able to get. So without further ado, we'll move on with things. Clicking New World and Custom World, we'll scroll down and go to the Lone Survivor map and go to Offline Mode, Safe to get rid of the meteorites. The mode has to be offline because it will not let you launch it otherwise. So go ahead and click on Mods. Here you can see that I have a folder icon next to the mod. Most of the usual ones you should see will have a valve icon, and those are mods that you've subscribed to on the workshop. So double clicking this adds it to the right side. Click OK and go ahead and go into advanced, and we're going to change some settings here. I like disabling the random spawns, enabling spectator, and going to realistic speed for welding and grinding. That way I know how it feels in the one time speed scenario that some servers run. All right, so everything's set up here. There's an error you could experience when you press OK. It might say the world is corrupt after it's been loading a little while. And that would be because you more than likely messed up somewhere in one of the SBC files. Like you forgot to include the top portion where it says a whole bunch of information about the XML type or the very bottom where it closes a lot of the uh, code off. So if you get the error when you press here, it gets to this screen and says world is corrupt. Make sure you check out the files that you've made to see if the errors are there. All right, so here we are. We're in the world, and go ahead and press G, but make sure your cursor is not looking at the platform anywhere. That way we can emulate, eliminate a possible error that would have appeared if we added it to the hotbar. So go ahead and do that. Press G, scroll down. Here we can see our gyroscope, and it has an icon. If you don't have an icon, it'll show up as one of these empty spots but give you that gyroscope original name that you have displayed for the block. I'm going to go ahead and go to the left where we see Shellcorp, and this is added by the block categories SBC file, and here we can see our, our block is here as well. So go ahead and just right click that. If you have the tab but the block is not there, it means that you probably messed up on the string line for the block. So make sure you check that, that it goes type ID and then subtype ID, or else it won't show up like this. We're going to go ahead and add the grinder and welder. So we can check the build models. All right, so now I press 9 while looking away. And as I move the cursor onto the platform, there's an error that could appear. And that would be because you didn't UV map the model. As you can see, everything's fine. Another error that could appear is if you go to click the block down like that, the block wouldn't appear. It would just give you like an error sound. And that's more than likely because you forgot the extra bit of code on the definition line for your block. The gyroscope has it, but stuff like an armor block won't have that extra code. So it'll just say the definition. All right, so we're going to add three more models and bring out the grinder. And hopefully it doesn't crash when we go through the different build states. All 
All right, so the models look white, but that's because how the texture is set up for the block. I can actually recolor them if I want to. As you can see, if you want the color to be darker, like the way the armor is and stuff, that's a simple change to the CM file or the uh, add texture, so the CM texture or the add one, and you just make it a little bit darker and it'll get more to this. I'll try to do more videos on explaining the different types of textures and what the changes you do can actually do to the model, but that will have to be in another video. As you can see, all the textures are working. We got the super basic texture for the construction models, and we got our low res textures for this, and that the light and the dark versions are actually separated. Our emissive is working, and our control panel here looks to be working fine. And we got the yellow access block right here. As a side note, I don't actually see this texture that I'm seeing here on my computer because I play on super low graphics to actually be able to run the game any sort of smoothly. I can't play on planets and all that fun stuff. Until I'm able to get a new video card, it's going to be hard for me to judge the textures because to me the textures look a lot smoother than they do on the computer I'm using right now. And that's because this computer is able to run the max graphics settings. All right, so I want to check a few things, and that's going to be in the debug draw menu by pressing F11. Brings that up. And here you can see on the right, debug draw, model dummies, mount points, primitives. And then an error down here. Click open a new window. Brings this up. And this none file extensions error is pointless to you. It doesn't actually affect anything as far as modders are concerned. There's nothing we can actually do about it at this moment. The devs made one of the changes in one of the updates and added this for every single block that you make. So if you see it, it's going to be there. <coughs> All right, so next I want to look at the model dummies. So come over here to debug draw and click the dummies. And here you can see this little white box, and that box represents the actual area of which it can interact with things. So that is the size of the yellow cube. On some of the stuff over here, you can see bigger and smaller ones, referencing all their different things. It looks like we could widen ours up about double the size and maybe just a little bit taller, and it'll be just about perfect. And the next thing we want to look at is the mount points. So if we bring up our block, you have to look at it in this mode. If you place it, you won't actually see the yellow squares. But as you can see, all of our mount points are showing up. The base, the four sides of the base, the circles on the side, the bar back here. If I back up a little bit further, the bar on the top. So everything there looks to be good. And the next thing I want to look at is the physics primitives. This is automatically checked when you open up the menu. Just go ahead and uncheck it and recheck it and I'll bring it up. And here you can see that we have our collision box. Now the reason I said to have the bigger collision box with the build models is because we can't change the collision mesh for the build states in a simple fashion with how the plugin for Blender comes out out of the box. So just make sure that you make the collision box the proper size and you take that account into account when you're making the build state because if I got rid of this top part here and just had this platform it would look like I'd be able to run across but the full collision mesh would be preventing me. As you can see, it extends a little bit past where we actually set it, but that's not too much of a problem as I've not experienced anything where I needed that perfect collision size, so don't get too concerned about it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And that pretty much wraps up the models for us. 
Um, I'll cover more of the empties that we saw over there when I get to making those blocks. I'll cover more about textures individually so you understand the difference between all of them and all that fun stuff. But please keep in mind that I'm not going to be able to use the computer I am using right now all the time. It's kind of a temporary thing, so the sooner I can get a new video card, the better. That way I can continue making all these videos for you and actually reference stuff in-game without having to try to arrange something to be able to record for you guys. But that's pretty much it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have